With great power comes great responsibility, and no one knows that better than me because it's with heavy heart that I start this Monday video report by publicly apologizing to former Miami of Florida head coach Al Golden for getting him fired. Yes, it's all on me. It's all on me. Do I sound like Andy Reid after a Philadelphia Eagles or Kansas City Chiefs press conference over the past 10 years? Yeah. Because on Saturday, I came out with a 15-dime best bet on the Hurricanes. And, of course, as a 7.5-point dog, they only lost 58 nothing, Worst loss in school history. I put the kibosh on you. It was like giving you the evil eye. It's all my fault that you got fired. So, to those Miami of Florida Hurricane fans out there, there's, what, at least three or four of you left still that are under the age of 50, right? And to the university itself, my sincerest apologies. You know, all the years doing this, it still never ceases to amaze me how you can be so right one day and so wrong the other. Case in point, could I have had three worse choices in football than Georgia Southern, a double-digit loser in App State on Thursday night, than Utah State, an even bigger double-digit loser on Friday night at uh, San Diego State, and, of course, the aforementioned Miami of Florida Hurricanes on Saturday? I don't think so. I think that's like the ungodly trifecta when it comes to losing. Um, but then yesterday, I come out with the best bet on the other team in Miami, and I get that one right because I looked at yesterday's card from day one this last week when the lines were released, and I thought, you know, Miami of, Miami Dolphins are just going to destroy the Houston Texans because if you got my play yesterday, and it was another 15 best bet release, if you saw my analysis, I told you that I thought that they would take that momentum that they gained from that road route 38-10 at Tennessee. They would funnel it back, channel that injury in the home debut of the interim head coach Dan Campbell. I also told you and laid out the game exactly how it would be played out, that they would once again go to Lamar Miller, who had a good game at Tennessee, who had been averaging 4.4 yards per carry on the season, but who had been underutilized in Joe Philbin, the former head coach's system. And I thought that also that Miller's emergence and more carries for Miller would make Ryan Tannehill all the more dangerous because you're not going to win the game when Tannehill's throwing the ball 30 plus times. Wow. I mean, it was like I had the newspaper for the day in advance for how that game story was written. 41 nothing at halftime as a four and a half point chalk. I felt pretty good there. I felt that was comeuppance after losing 58 nothing with that other Miami of uh, Florida team the day prior. And how about Lamar Miller in the game? I mean, 14 carries, 175 yards, and Ryan Tannehill even better than I thought. What did he complete? The first 16 passes in the game, 18 for 19, 282 yards and four touchdowns. So right after being so wrong. I think they've written some songs about that, haven't they? Anyway, this is going to be your Monday video report. I've got a free play coming up in just a moment on your over-under for the Arizona-Baltimore game. Let's quickly recap how the Doggies have been doing. Of course, last week, the Doggies, oh my God, they barked all the way to the kennel, going 10-4 and four with six outright winners. This week, however, the favorites are 6-6-1 six, six and one going into your Monday nighter. Uh, of those six underdogs... Um, Three outrights, Jaguars, Saints, and Raiders yesterday. The one push I'm counting as the Vikings-Lions game, because that game, of course, fluctuated the line about an hour before kickoff when the Adrian Peterson news broke. Detroit suddenly switched from being a one-point underdog to a one, one-and-a-half-point favorite. So I count that as a push because you can't accurately grade that game. Nobody grades games based on the closing price in the contest. So 6-6-1, six, six and one, the favorites and underdogs are tied up going into tonight's game. But for the season, the puppies are still... 53, 45, and 7 against the spread. 53, 45, and 7. And 37 of those 53 underdogs have won outright. Now, on Monday nights, of course, we've had the dog bark five of seven games. You got to love when your cell phone's out of reach and it's ringing like crazy. And if you think I'm going to stop this video report to answer it, you are sorely mistaken. So you'll just have to put up with that annoying ringtone in the background from Verizon. But anyway, the Monday Night Dogs are 5-2 and two so far in the season. The only two winners, the Eagles last week and the Packers against Kansas City uh, four weeks earlier. Um, but, you know, all as I always like to tell you, it's all cyclical when it comes to the dogs and the favorites covering. And at the end of the season, you're going to have one or the other, just a few games over 500. Hell, look at how Monday night favorites of so seven points or more have done. Going back to 1993, they're 55, 49, and two against the spread. I mean, you're talking six games over 500 for 
you know, over two decades worth of action and uh, home favorites since 1993 overall, no matter the point spread. 132, 124, and six versus the odds makers, a whopping eight games over 500 in all. So let's talk about the game here tonight. Uh, the big featured play today, of course, is going to be the selection from Chris Jordan. Normally, a thousand star play is his top rated release, but today he has an ultra rare. Double your wager, 2,000 star release, his third of the NFL season, his 10th out of, or no, 11 out of 15 overall, and it's your side selection tonight, and when I saw he had that play, baby, I made it the half price play of the day. You get it for half price simply by using coupon code Chris, his first name, C-H-R-I-S. He's had two 2,000 star double your wager releases so far this season. They won by a combined score of 43-3. to Seattle 26-0 over Chicago. Green Bay 17-3 at San Francisco. You got both of those winners for at least half price off. The same thing goes tonight. Keep in mind, 1,000 star plays are his top-rated selections, right? 1,000 star plays or higher in all sports. Going back to 2006, he's made $1 betters $94,800. And $15. So that's the featured play today. And you can get the other featured plays, etc., and all the other coupon codes over on the homepage. Let's talk about this game tonight in terms of the over-under. It's sitting right around 49 points, and I've got to go with the over in this particular contest. Listen, you know, Arizona's 5-1 and one over on the season. The Ravens have gone over four of their last five. You look at this Ravens team and their defense, they've allowed 25, 33, 20, 28 and 37 points in their last five games, okay? And the game that they allowed the fewest points happened to be the game in Pittsburgh when Michael Vick was taking over for the injured Ben Roethlisberger making his first start for the Steelers and that overtime comeback win by the Ravens. But otherwise, they've been pathetic. Uh, defensively. They don't have much of a pass rush, missing Terrell Suggs, who uh, lost him for the season in the season opening loss at Denver. Uh, their secondary is suspect, to say the least. Joe Flacco's got to air it out constantly, always throwing the ball because his ground game simply hasn't been there this year. Now, on the other side of the field, you've got an Arizona team that puts points on the board and can do so very well, as as we've seen, uh, as they've gotten off to a very good start this season. You know, you look at this Arizona team and you look at the offense and you have to Point your finger at Carson Palmer because I never thought, and I think most experts didn't think, he would come back and be this strong at this age after a severe knee injury last year. But you saw this team put 31 points on the board at home against New Orleans, 48 points on the board at Chicago, 47 at home against San Francisco, 42 at Detroit. Now, the two games that they struggled offensively, the 24-22 loss at home against St. Louis and the 25-13 loss at uh, Pittsburgh in their last outing, both of those games, they totally owned the box score. Totally owned the box score. But turnovers did them in. Six costly turnovers in those two losses. And that's what hurt them. But otherwise, they moved the ball. I mean, Carson Palmer, um, or actually go back to the Steelers game just last weekend. You know, first half of that game, they outgained the Steelers 279 to 59. I mean, that's what a dominant performance they had offensively, and yet they lost the game again because of the turnovers. Um, I think Carson Palmer threw for 421 yards in that game. They outgained the Steelers 469 to 310. You go back to the Rams game. They outgained St. Louis 447 to 328. The turnovers did them in. Now, you can't handicap turnovers. You can't forecast injuries, okay? You just have to put them outside of the equation when you're picking a side or picking a total. But... Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is this. The Cardinals can put points on the board as long as they don't shoot themselves on the foot. The Ravens have to outscore their poorest defense. So you know they're going to go for it at every opportunity tonight, and Flacco's probably going to throw the ball at least 35 times. That means more time on the clock, more scoring opportunities. I think this price should have been around 52 and a half, 53. I'm going to go over. That's your free play. Best of luck to you guys, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow when we do this one more time.